Hey, what's happening guys? Today we are going to take a look at some CMOS chips. In particular, we are going to look at this one here, the CD40106, which is a Schmidt trigger inverter. Let's go over to the uh, computer and take a look at the data sheet for it. All right, here's the data sheet for the CD40106B, and this is a CMOS chip, which has some advantages over um, TTL chips. And we see here the CD40106B consists of six Schmidt trigger inputs. So what that means, it is an inverter with hysteresis, basically. You can see here the trigger switches at different points for positive and negative going signals. The difference between the positive and the negative signal is known as hysteresis. Yeah, that's what I said. So you can see here we have a hysteresis voltage. Say we run this chip with a 5 volt supply of 0.9 volts, meaning there's going to be a 0.9 volt difference between where it switches positive and where it switches negative. And that gives you a little bit of dead space in the middle and allows you to clean up what we might want to call a sloppy waveform and turn it into more of a digital square waveform. So a very useful type of chip. And you can see down here we have some applications, wave and pulse shapers, monostable multivibrators, and A-stable multivibrators, which, you know, happens to be one of my favorite circuits. So we might just take a look at that. Now here is a uh, list of the different pins. We have a power supply and we have a ground. Pins 14 and 7. So there's 14, there's 7. Our, our power, main power, and our ground. Otherwise, you have an input and an inverted output. Input, inverted output, six times. Nothing uh, <laughs> too spectacular there. Now, one of the things I like about this chip is it is useful for creating some sort of a clock driver. You have a monostable multivibrator, and you have right here the A-stable multivibrator, which is what we're going to take a look at today. And it tells us how we can set the timing. Simply, it is an RC circuit. So, all we need to do is put a resistor and a capacitor between our input, or, well, from our output back through our input, and uh, we will end up with a wave that looks somewhat similar to this guy. So, if we take a look here at the formula, we see our time is equal to RC over this equation here. So, if we put in a 50 kilo ohm resistor and a 100 picofarad capacitor, that gives us a 2 microsecond or a 0.4 second pulse, which is about, you know, a half a hertz. So let's see if we can find a 50K resistor and a 100 picofarad capacitor and see what we can make happen there. Let's jump back over to the workbench and see what we got going on. All right, let's get it set up. I got a breadboard here and we'll get out our chip. Keep in mind, CMOS chips are static sensitive, so do be uh, a bit careful as to how you handle them. Yeah. It's got a bent pin. Get our pin straightener here. Lovely little device handcrafted in Canada. What we do is we put that in there like that. Squeeze. And it straightens out all our pins. Nice and neat like. So we'll put that in the board. Pretty simple so far, right? Let's hook up 
our ground pin number seven here and uh, pin 14 is our power so we'll hook that in as well Then we need a resistor going from pin 2 to pin 1. And they said 50K. So let's see if we got a 50K in here. And 560K. 510R. 5.1K. 51K. Close enough to 50K for government work so we get one of them out just fold it over old school I like to call it you know what I like to do is Make sure they're even. So that goes between two and one, like that. And then we need a 100 picofarad capacitor. I just happen to have one right here. And that guy goes between one which is our input and ground now we just need a way to see what we're doing so let's get an LED oh, we'll grab a green one for today I'm just going to put in a little jumper here. From our output on pin 2, we'll bring it over here like this. We'll plug our LED in here. Then we need to limit the current. Uh, let's see. Current limiting resistors. We're going to do about five volts on here. So, like a 330 ohm, 220, yeah, 22R. We'll do a 220. One 220R resistor coming up. And that will limit our current. So that we don't burn up our LED. So far, so good. Put a couple of these in so we can apply power to it. And what we got to... Power supply is set for 12 volts. We'll bring that down to 5. And we're not going to limit current on the uh, power supply. All right, so power it up. And it looks like it's lit pretty solid to me. Got to put that on the scope and see what it, uh, the period actually is. Okay, I got the scope hooked up. And we'll swing you up here. 
and you can have a look there and you can see we are at 75 kilohertz which is a uh, not at all what we were expecting although we are getting the uh, square wave look that we want with the hard on and the hard off so let me change the capacitor here and we're at 100 picofarad now let's go 1000 picofarad That should uh, definitely slow us down, right? All right, let me bring you back up to the scope. And now we are at 8 kilohertz. Still too fast for the eye to see. So let me bump it up. Again, I'm going to pull out the 1,000 picofarad and put in 10,000 picofarad, which, to be honest, is probably still going to be too slow, but we're working our way up here. And fire back up. Now we're looking at a little over 1 kilohertz. Let's find something even bigger. One moment. Now, one thing we do need to keep in mind here is our unused input should be tied either high or low. I haven't done that yet. All right, we got some ceramic capacitors here. Let's go 100 nanofarad and see how that does. Give me a second. I got to bend these out. Get everything to fit. Pardon me. My fingers are fumbling here. All right, I think I got it. Power it up. And now we're down to 85 hertz. So, let's go to 1 microfarad. All right, I got the one microfarad cap in there. Power it up. And we're seeing 14 hertz and 14 hertz. We can actually see with the naked eye. It is constantly flickering. There is no where it's staying on. That is just an aspect of the camera. I don't know why it's doing that. But, there we have it, with a one microfarad capacitor, and our resistor, I forget what resistor we used, 50, 50, 50K, 51K, we end up with a 15 hertz signal, not bad, now, let me uh, fix all those inputs, and we'll see if it helps to straighten up the signal. Alright, I've tied all of our unused output or inputs to ground. Hook back up here and take you back up to the scope. And you can see we've cleaned up quite a bit. And we have a much more stable signal. Yeah. It's looking pretty good. Got a very, very slight amount of ringing on there. And we could fix that with a better setup.
So why am I playing with this chip? Well, it's used in a lot of home-built synthesizers. So in a future video, probably next week or so, we're going to try and make a triangle wave synthesizer using this chip, these components, and a couple others, of course. And see if we can make some pretty sounds. So if you guys enjoyed this little introduction to the CD40106, I hope you'll give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Big thanks to you guys for watching. That's it. I'm out. Peace.